Coach, it seemed like, uh, I know you talk a lot about your special teams and points after, or possessions after timeouts. It seemed like two defensive steals after timeouts in the first half is kind of what got you all some energy and kind of helped produce that, a little bit of that run in the first half. Is that what you saw and then and just those point, those possessions after timeouts in the first half? That is for sure one of our special teams and our guys are aware of it. They've picked up on that pretty fast. Um, tonight we had... Uh, Ten possessions of offense after a timeout, and our OER was 1.1. That's very good. Uh, defensively, out of a timeout, we had 11 possessions, and our DER was 1.18, which is really, really bad. Those steals obviously look better and typically lead to transition points. We need to try to be above 1.0 offensively and below 1.0 defensively. Uh, especially on ATOs, but our guys have um, kind of, I don't know if bought in is the word, but they understand the emphasis behind it, and that is a, a portion of special teams that for sure we have to key in on. Buzz, it looked like that you guys, y'all had a 21 point lead, it looked like y'all were uh, having things under control. What do you think, you know, from your perspective, happened that Northwestern was able to? kind of get back in the contention to some degree? Uh, in simplest terms, I think we just exhaled. Um, I, I don't think our endurance emotionally is where it has to be in order to be a good team. I think um, maybe a portion of it is in the right way. We were excited we were ahead, excited we were playing good, and emotionally kind of let off what we need to do right and um, we have typically done that we did it against um, Kingsville we also did it against Baylor we did it immediately to start the second half it was we started the second half better today uh, we started a different group than we started in the game I don't know if that's part of it but we for sure changed something which led to a more positive result so uh, the meltdown happen later. We just need to try to prevent those, regardless of when. Did you, did you excel after getting your first one out of the way here? I, I, don't, I don't know that I was very good. Um, my endurance needs to improve, for sure. Um, just seems uh, this is not justification, and it's for sure not an excuse. Uh, it just seems like the world has been spinning incredibly fast since the, since the first day I got here. And uh, I'm not in game shape. Um, and so I, I, I need to improve my endurance uh, just as much or more than, than our kids. Hopefully I, I'm the standard barrier relative to emotional energy. And at times I was exhausted. And so uh, I know that's not the right thing to say after game number one, but that's also the truth. There had to be a lot of things, especially um, at about start about the 10 minute mark of the first half. She really felt like you know, they were getting it. Yeah, I think there were stretches where we did do good. Um, the reason why I think that that stretch was positive was we didn't turn it over. And uh, in that stretch that you're talking about, uh, we had four assists in that stretch. And typically speaking for our team, what I know about it thus far, um, it means that we didn't give up an offensive rebound. So we were able to finish the possession with a defensive rebound. And then to some degree, it was a broken floor, which led to some level of transition, which created uh, maybe advantage, disadvantage situations, and we didn't turn it over. So. Uh, the two issues that we have offensively, our turnovers are going to be uh, a big part. And then on the other end, um, can we finish with a defensive rebound? And I think if we can do both of those, then we'll have a chance to be okay. It's when both of those things negatively are happen simultaneously that we're really going to struggle, as any team would. I know you talked about how you uh, – the, the emotional energy you brought, but is there a, a little bit of a sigh of relief? What does it mean to get that first win out of the way? 
Uh, thankful, for sure. I mean, I love Coach Mack. Uh, he may be the best human being other than Coach Lair I've ever known that's a college coach. Um, he's won more games than any coach in the history of the state of Louisiana other than Eddie Robinson. And um, he did it at Northwestern State and at Bossier Parish Community College. Um, I just have the utmost respect for who he is and how he goes about things as a person and as a coach. Um, so it was unique or strange playing against coach. I think um, I think I played coach uh, at New Orleans my seventh game. So my seventh game as a head coach, I played coach. That was a game that was already scheduled um, when I was hired at New Orleans. They beat us. Um, 71-67, they ran that same zone that they ran tonight, which is what they ran when I worked for coach. So uh, strange in that regard. Uh, glad that we won. I think everything uh, over the next, whatever it is, 125 days, 126 days till we get to Nashville, I think will be hard. And I think we're going to have to learn to embrace slash run to hard because I don't think that anything w will be easy for our group. I thought he played good. Yeah, uh, I don't know if you were here the last time. He was. Huh? He's the one from Virginia. Yeah, that's right. Mike. Yes, sir. Um, uh, E-Man was the most improved player in our program in October. Kind of came a long way and came uh, – to where we had a level of trust in what he was doing on both ends. And we need Dre to be that in November. He had a really good day of practice yesterday, for sure the best day he's ever had, uh, was active uh, today at shoot around in a positive way. I, I thought he did some really good things. We, 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 need, we need everybody to continue to improve, but I agree, uh, I thought that I think he only had he had two turnovers. Uh, one was the right there on the baseline in front of our bench and threw it towards their rim. And I don't remember the other one. Um, he can shoot it better than he did on catch shoot from three. He's one of our better shooters, even though statistically he got off to a bad start tonight. But yeah, and our team has recognized it even since yesterday. Like he's so we need him to have a good month. Coach, how big was Savion being a catalyst on both ends of the floor? Yeah, we, we, we don't have enough guys to play through, and so we're going to have to continue to find ways uh, to play through him. We just – we can't have nine turnovers from J.J. and Savion. If turnovers are an issue, it doesn't mean that we're, like, giving turnovers to guys that haven't done it before. But we can't have – guys with the most experience at Texas A&M turning the ball over at that rate. If nine out of our 14 turnovers were from those two guys and two of JJ's, they literally just just took it from him. Um, we, we can't have those. But Savion can pass, dribble, and shoot. Uh, he can be more physical, and as he continues to be more physical, it will help us. Uh, we need him to rebound at a higher rate defensively where he's in the mix because – if he can get the defensive rebound, he had three, that's good. Three, and he played 35 minutes. So he's getting one defensive rebound every seven minutes. Uh, we need him to get more at a faster rate. He has a license to lead our break. And so when he can get the rebound, now all of a sudden we're a faster team and we have more space because the guy that got the rebound can initiate the offense. And not everybody can do that, regardless of who they are. So um, that that takes uh, pressure off other guys. Because we, we have some guys that can play the point, but they're really not points. And so anytime we can get a defensive rebound with Savion and he's the point, I think that takes some pressure off our group. Anything else for Coach? Thanks.